Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the North Melbourne vs Fremantle game in which North Melbourne got off to a really good start but again just showed that their second half needs to really improve. I mean they will put it together for a four quarter effort but this is very similar to the likes of I felt like the Swans last year but um in terms of them not being able to put four quarters together regularly, um, but North are doing it for only a half, really. They put together one of the best, uh, like, first sort of t uh, quarter in about 15 minutes that I've seen. I believe they're up 50 to 13 or whatever, something like that. They're up by 32 points or whatever at the uh, start of this one. But Frio just came back, and it was off on the back of Luke Jackson actually getting the better of Tristan Cherry in the matchup. Um, Tristan Sherry got, um, in the end, he got an extra about 10 points because of umpire blunders and stuff like that and scoring blunders. Um, so he got to 104 in the end when he probably deserved a 90. Uh, but uh, Jacko got to a 108, so I was really happy with that one. But anyway, before we get into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So as you can see here, she's all one to one he was absolutely amazing, and yeah, 26, 46, 19, 30, did his job. Uh, could have probably gone bigger, but a 1-2-1 one, one is what you take in the back line. For the people that don't have him, which I don't think many um, competitive players don't have him because of how sort of... Um, how strong and how, how strong he's been in the first couple of games and how weak the whole back line has been um, with a lot of people fading Dacos, including me. Um, there was worries with Mac Holmes um, impacting Tom Stewart, so a lot of people didn't go Stewart, even though he looked great. Um, Sinclair was um, was out, um, and he's going to drop in price massively. Sinclair, uh, sorry, Sicily as well. He was taking a more accountable role or whatever, um, and now they've moved Hardwick back so that he doesn't have to take as more of an accountable role. So um, he was one that a lot of people skipped over. Wing Noon Malira, we didn't know if he was going to be good. Um, he looks good, but I'd like to give him another week or two to um, perfect that, uh, to get better. Um, so Shiza was sort of the obvious pick out of everything, and I didn't think he'd take it to the next level because I thought he'd maybe move it into the midfield. He is not moving into that midfield. There's no need to put him in the midfield. Put him at halfback, be the distributor, be the... Um, sort of almost Jake Lloyd for his whole career. He can do that, and he will be he will be amazing off that halfback. And you've got a halfback in um, in Zach Fisher, and also now um, Harry Sheasel, and then Colby McCurcher just next year goes into that midfield of um, of Wardlaw, LDU, um, Tom Powell, and, and that midfield is already full strong, and they don't need anything else. And um, so yeah, it their their side is strong. They're just lacking the keys to really compete at the high level. They've got what um, Dawson as well as uh, Two Pink and um, Coleman Jones, I guess, as key sort of defenders, it looks like. And then also up forward, they've got Nick Larky. And then, I mean, Zane Dersm is almost a key forward. That's how little they have up there. So, yeah, they, they're starting to build their side and they will knock over sides um, this year. But uh, they just need to put a four four quarter effort in. But yeah, she's a one two one was amazing. Tom Powell, another guy that I'm going to look at, depending on which ways um, I go with stuff, as his role has been amazing and he could make a lot of cash quickly. So it's all about finding the right trades this week. Sherry uh, one hundred and four, he, he's going to go up like fifty k comparatively to um, Grundy going up like four or five k. Um, yeah, it looks bad, but. We'll see. I thought, um, I thought, given the matchups, that it was going to be a little bit worse, and I'm not too worried. The bleeding fourteen points isn't that bad, considering that um, some other trades would have probably bled me more. But it probably would have been a good trade to trade him out. But anyway, um, nothing I can really do about it now. Scott, um, one hundred two. He looked really good. Um, so he beat his break even. George Wardlaw back to his best. Ninety eight. Um, yeah, 23, 27, 28, 20. He's surely going to take that next step. LDU, 96. I reckon LDU is one that um, he's going to be He's going to be the leader in that group, but he's not going to score fancy-wise. I think he's always just going to be a mid-90s guy now, looking at it. He has the perfect role, but um, he's just not getting the points that you need out of him. Like He really needs to put some 110 games on to be valuable. Fisher back to his best in 85. Dersma in 85 as well, but I still wouldn't be picking up Dersma even though he's um, he's had an 85 here. His role is just one where he's going to score 40s and stuff like that, and he's almost out of the price range anyway for those people that wanted him. But um, 85, he's probably going to go up 
probably 40k or so so 340k so he is going to make a lot of cash but i think there's uh, other guys there that are going to be more uh reliable um in terms of cash generators mccurcher 76 uh minus three break even he's going to go up probably almost 60k or so uh yeah he's just been amazing he, he'll be 400k and he'll be a one that we can almost keep for quite a while almost keep to the buys that's how good he looks um and yeah 76 is a good sort of marker i think he's one of the ones i think he's one of my four lowest scores or whatever for the round to show you how good my round is going that a 75 is uh going well i just need to nail my captaincy pick and then i'm really really doing well then you see a drop off here to zerha simkin curtis lazaro subbed out on a 49 not too bad some cash in there probably going to trade him out to another forward um, or midfielder um, this week. We'll see who debuts and does well um, in the uh, Sunday games, and we'll go from there as potentially, but he may also stick around for another week and um, as we fix up some other stuff. Toby Pink, um, Darcy Tucker, Logan McDonald, uh, sorry, Luke McDonald, Common Jones, Larky, Stevenson, Stevens, Dawson, Core, and Ford. No one really knows who there. Frio, Sarong125, he did a lot of his work in the second half here. You can see 77 point second half. Um, if he kicked, I think he kicked like three behinds. If he kicked goals, that's like a 140. Um, Jacko with a 108, he did amazing. Uh, a little bit slow in the last quarter with only an 18. Would have loved to have him gotten up to like a 120 to really beat the Jerry matchup, but done his job. Um, and then Clark here, a 99. Uh, one that I've looked into grabbing up just because of the way the Frio backline is structured. He could easily just be the one that gets the, the ball quite a lot with um, with Luke Ryan potentially having to be um, the man that goes um, accountable. So, yeah, one that I'm definitely looking into swapping for, um, swapping the likes of a um, Hayden Young for. So we'll look into that one. Um, Luke Ryan, 98, he looked great. Jamie um, Aish here, 91, he did really good as well. Um, Brayshaw, 91 as well. Just sort of there or thereabouts, not really going to be... doesn't look like he's going to be that damaging one at look, um, like he was last year with like those 110s. Uh, Johnson, 85, he looks to be going really well and we'll have a good break-even split. We'll look at that. Um, Hayden Young, only in 80, uh, 75, sorry. And yeah, just never really got that damaging quarter that he goes and scores like a 40-odd. So just looks like he's going to be one that um, doesn't really get the marks that were um, that he's going to need and doesn't really get the tackle count up high enough to really damage it. Uh, if we look here, his tackle count was four and four, whereas he had ten tackles in the last game for a ninety-five. So, yeah, I'm I'm worried to trade him out, um, but it might become time that he needs to be traded out and um, switched around. Sharp uh, seventy-three uh, did really well for cash generation. Um, Banfield seventy, Switzkowski sixty-seven, Fife sixty-three, um, doing well there. Uh, Walters, 61, Hughes, 55, Tracy, Frederick, Tabner, Emmett, Walker, Amos, Pierce, Draper, O'Meara. Uh, Draper, not really a fantasy scorer, never will be. Um, and probably going to come back out of the side in the next week or two when their guys come back, I would suspect. But then again, McDonald's is a long-term injury. Cox was a forward, so we'll see. If he does have good job security, then maybe you can pick him up as he's going to be a slow burner. Um, but anyway, that pretty much is... Um, the video there, a short one here just to go through North versus Fremantle. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be the Melbourne versus Hawthorne game and then followed by the Swans versus Essendon game. And I guess I'll see you guys in those videos. Bye, guys.